and welcome to the Thursday live lunch cast on Community Media Week, uh, our big fundraising endeavor that we're trying out for the first time. Um, we're having a great time with this, uh, and we hope you are too. Uh, so for the uninitiated, uh, Somerville Media Center is uh, tacking on to Nationwide Community Media Day, which was this past Sunday, and we've expanded it to a full week of events and programming here on Somerville Community Access Television, um, our radio programming on Boston Free Radio, um, and we have events going on as well. Um, last night was an amazing SCAT TV throwbacks event at the Arts of the Armory, and we thank Brian Coleman for uh, helping to organize that. Uh, coming up, we have an open house here at uh, Somerville Media Center between uh, 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. Come get a tour of the facility, come meet some of the staff members. We'll also have a live podcast uh, starting up at 12.30 that'll go from 12.30 to 1.30. So if you're in the Union Square area, come out for that. And then our big Community Media Week wraps up on Sunday with a comedy show. Uh, at the Comedy Studio, 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. right over at Bow Market. Um, we're offering two-for-one tickets right now, so take advantage of that. Uh, it'll be a great time. We're excited for it. Um, so, Dave, what's the point of Community Media Week? Why are you taking that valuable airspace? Where's Tom Hartman? Well, here's, here's an answer to all of that. Um, we are looking to diversify where we get our, our, our funds from, and we need to. Um, the, the landscape has changed. The media landscape has changed uh, since community media and public access were founded in 1984 uh, with, the, uh, with the Cable Act that created public access, PEG channels, public educational government channels. Um, so we are a public channel, uh, so we allow members of the public to come in, learn our equipment and our facilities, and make programming. Um, so people are cutting the cord, and the, the cable cord, and uh, the FCC is clamping down on us, so we need to ramp up like other nonprofits have been doing over the past couple of decades and play catch up. And one of the ways that we've decided to do that is with a fundraising week. So we, we hope you've been enjoying the programming that we've had so far, and we hope you're not annoyed by our calls to donate to Somerville Media Center, but actually are um, en en enriched by them. <laughs> uh, that might be a stretch, but we hope you um, see the value that we do in, in community media and that you do go to somervillemedia.org to make a donation, whatever you're able to. If you make a $50 donation, you can get a uh, Made in Somerville t-shirt. And with a $75 donation, you can get a Made in Somerville tote bag. So we do have some initiative, um, some goodies uh, that come with a donation. So. Cool. All of that, all of that uh, housekeeping aside, I want to welcome uh, our guest in the studio today, who's been sitting patiently while I did that spiel. Uh, this I was is just about to make a donation. Oh, awesome! <laughs> so this is uh, Lars Torres from Artisans Asylum, one of our valued community partners. Thank you. How, how are you doing, Lars? It's a beautiful day. It is. I'm doing great. Thank you, Dave. Awesome. I'm, do, I'm doing well. Yeah. Um, so to the completely uninitiated, I don't know how you can live in Somerville or just live in the area and not know about Artisans Asylum. Um, but, you know, for, for the individual living under the rock, yeah. Um, <laughs> well, yeah. why, don't you, uh, why don't you tell us all about Artisans Asylum sure, and yeah. all the good stuff happening over there. Okay, thanks. Um, hello everyone, Facebook Live Nation. Um, so Artisans Asylum, I feel like we've been living under the rock, a really big rock, 40,000 square foot rock. Um, but um, we're sort of starting to come out, you know, we're going to be 10 years old as a community resource and it's time to really invite the community in a way that we haven't before. So in the past, Artisans Asylum has really served as an oasis for makers, artists, fabricators, hackers, hobbyists. 
who needed a place just kind of to gather and get work done. You know, with the price of real estate, you can get a condo, but you can't get a garage. Right. You can get an apartment, but you can't get a basement. So where do you put all your tools? And how do you make the stuff that you're passionate about outside of your day job or whatever? If you're lucky, your day job is your passion. But for a lot of us, we got to do what we do to, you know, keep a roof over our head. But then our passion gets put aside. Artisan's Asylum is a 40,000 square foot wonderland, as I like to call it, where we, um, like you, have members, and our members pay a monthly fee to have access to both a community of problem solvers, you know, woodworkers, welders, um, coders, painters, this incredible community, right? You know this. You're, oh, you're yeah. a comic book artist. I mean, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I'll have to sell that, but I want to sell it to the <laughs> Facebook world there. Um, and so we pay a monthly fee. And you can have access either to a studio or to one of our 14 shops, mm -hmm. you know, which helps you build the things that you're passionate about, whether it's jewelry, whether it's you know, turning on a lathe, wood bowls, what have you. Um, sort of your imagination's a limit. And the biggest thing, I always come back to it, is the community. That's what helps people solve technical problems, advance their skills, just let off a little steam after a hard day. So it's a great place. Yeah, and yeah. that's what I love about your organization and ours is that there's a lot of similarities, uh, not only because we're, we're both membership organizations, yeah. but you know, all, all that aside, it's, it's, uh, it's about empowering people to do what they love by providing the education uh, to, to, you know, in your case, to have access to all the tools yeah. and, and equipment that would be cost prohibitive for an individual, so, same with us, yeah. is like the, the media education that we offer on the individual level, right. you know, just uh, for um, the Adobe Creative Suite alone. Yeah. That's pretty cost prohibitive yeah. for an individual who uh, might be, you know, doing something, as you said, like a side gig or, you know, that, that they're passionate about, Person. but that they're not making money off of just yet. Right. So, and the hardware as well, you know, um, not all of us can, um, you know, get the hardware that we need to run software in the cloud, right? Mm. And so um, we certainly provide that access too. We have a computer lab and whatnot. So if people are new to the internet, um, Maybe they're not here, but uh, they can come in and get a taste and get going. Yeah, yeah, it, and we do offer um, like media education classes yeah. yep. for people who are new to the internet and who are new to, to every new service that's cropped up, like the the Google Suites. Sure. Um, you know, we have we partnered with the library to offer free classes okay. uh, to help people learn a little more about that. That's our uh, digital literacy series, which we're just wrapping up for this right. year and that we're planning out uh, for next year. Okay. And it, it takes up a good part of our calendar year and that's uh, free and in partnership with uh, mm -hmm. the Somerville Public Library. Um, so we've partnered yes. as, as two organizations uh, with similar missions on, on a few things in the past couple of years. Um, one was we made a video series for you all. Yes, um, beautiful series. Yeah, make meet your maker. Yes, where we profiled three of your members. Yeah, um, and and that was kind of fun. Good. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I know when we first met about that. You know, that was an idea. Yeah. Um, that that you had that you'd seen elsewhere in yeah. another similar organization, and um, you know, we it, it wasn't a matter of us taking that and replicating it. Mm -hmm. It was. You know, you all um, on your end, you know, pr seeking out the members that you'd wanted mm -hmm. to profile. Mm -hmm. Us going down there with uh, a set of interns, and I think Erica mm -hmm. uh, might have led that project, and uh, filming them, and then yeah. and then making these these three packages to help promote right. um, artisans. In right. I really love that because you sort of use the individual story mm -hmm. as the pathway to expose what artisans is, right? And so it's that sort of story-led introduction to who we are and what we do. And the three stories that you chose were wonderful. I think it was Sarah Miller, who's kind of an all-around fabricator. She was working on an autonomous vehicle at the time, right? And then Mac Pierce, multimedia artist. Mac, Mac yeah, Pierce. I know. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a star in a box right there, so. Uh, yeah, and then um, and then of course Pastry Queen, one yeah, of our school from members. Skull, yeah, and it's wonderful to see that uh, she was featured because Skull is such an important part of Somerville yeah. in terms of these uh, folks who who soup up spaceships and then ride around. You know, they fly around town on missions on a weekly basis. It's and the story, beautiful. yeah, that uh, that Pastry Queen provided about 
uh, meeting meeting this group at Burning Man, mm -hmm. and then uh, the the uh, exchange that they did with uh, what country was I it? I want to say Lithu Lithuania. Lithuania, possibly? Yeah, yeah, where they did like souped up souping up your bikes to a bunch of Lithuanian teenagers. Yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah, like so opportunities like that uh, abound for you all, yeah. uh, for your members, and and for our members as well. It's yeah. it's just the community, as you said. Uh, and the opportunity to uh, bounce ideas off mm -hmm. of off of people who are in the same boat as you are, um, who might have more skill, who might have yeah. less skill, who yeah. might have a talent for storytelling that you don't, who might have a talent for editing that you might not have. Mm -hmm. And you know, so what I always said to to my students when I taught a, a comics course was like. You know, once you get at, you know, find opportunities to join a gang. You know, right. find like your tribe. find your tribe. Yeah, totally. Yeah. And and uh, you know, uh, Somerville Media Center Artisans Asylum. You can certainly find your tribe. I couldn't agree more. And you know, <laughs> one of the things that I think is great is we thrive when sort of unlike but adjacent skills find each other. Yeah. Right. So you y'all are storytellers. You're also trainers and educators and many other things, but you're storytellers and the medium that you choose isn't one that's innate to nerds and geeks and hackers and makers. You know, you gotta kinda like, oh we're a little camera shy or whatever. So coming yeah. in there, giving people the confidence that no, you have a story, it's gonna do well. And being able to draw people out is is a gift. So yeah, yeah we were excited. Yeah. Thank you. And learning learning the language of, of filmmaking like yeah everything from basic like rule of thirds stuff yeah. Yeah. and then to the more advanced like just learning our our facilities and equipment here we are in this uh in our lovely uh hot set here which uh it stands for host operated what's the t stand for adam adam's off camera he's our technician Host operated set. <laughs> Let's go with that. <laughs> and so anyway, this was built uh, about a decade or more ago um, as a way for producers to uh, do a talk show style set without a crew. Right. Um, because technically, you don't you, you don't necessarily this is great. want to the need to to put together a full crew yeah. with a person on audio, a person on lighting. Um, uh, 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 director, uh, person on each camera, which we also have for all those people that definitely want to do that. We have that capability in our beautiful larger studio uh, mm -hmm. just across the hall there. Um, but, you know, hey, if you're just interested in putting out a talk show uh, or a news show or anything else with our, with our lovely green screen, um, you can. No, it's terrific because it's more intimate, you know, you don't have all the hustle bustle, the technology, you can just have a conversation, like you said, feel like you're in your living room. Yeah. So welcome to Dave's living room. My, my yeah. really conceptual living room here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so so the, the other part of that uh, collaboration was yeah. that we were granted access to uh, to the, your wood shop. Sure. Um, one of our one of our staff uh, members here, Stuart, yeah. um, and an intern. Um, who we was really valuable to us, but like all interns, their name escapes me at the moment, so I apologize to you, um, Emerson intern extraordinaire. Um, but you know, they were allowed. They got the training, they got the access, yeah. and uh, they were able to make uh, four uh, prop, uh, kind of movable props yeah. that um, we're still finishing up. Yeah. So, but it was a big jump. We wouldn't have been able to do otherwise. Um, we don't have that sort of equipment here, yeah. um, so that was that was great. That's good to hear because, um, again, going back to this sort of idea about how can we create new value by bringing discrete value sets together. Um, I think that one opportunity for us that we're excited about, and we get to learn with you, right? This is part of the big deal is we're learning alongside you, um, is how do we serve the mass production community? Um, it's growing, right? Um, there'll be a, a mass production coalition gathering, I think, at WGBH in, in a week or so. Mm -hmm. um, and so we'll be there um, trying to understand what the needs are of the production community. How can we support set building, right? How can we support rigging and gaffing and a lot of the things that go into 
a beautiful shot, mm -hmm. but is all behind the scenes technology and rigging and whatnot. So we'd love to learn how to do that better. And you guys gave us some confidence that we can dip our toe in there and make something happen. Great. So, thank you. Yeah, yeah, that's what collaboration's all about. Yeah, we want to keep it moving forward. <laughs> yeah. So uh, I want to go back to the, um, the, the uh, Meet Your Maker videos. Yeah. So uh, in, in the instance of our um, collaboration there, yeah. you know, we did, we did this exchange. Mm -hmm. um, and typically that's something that we do uh, as a paid production service. And yeah. that's something that over the years we've been dipping our toe into mm -hmm. um, and it's definitely something that we're more interested in especially as you know organizations nonprofits uh, businesses are are seeking to make professional videos yeah. um, and don't know how mm. so uh, you know that's definitely something that we offer right. as well is uh, you know if 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 uh, a company is out there wanting to make a video series uh, highlighting uh, mm. members, people who use your service. Um, if you're interested in, in doing just a short promotional videos uh, along the lines of a commercial, you know, that, that is something that we'd be happy to help with. Um, and you can go to somervillemedia.org to figure out how. Uh, while you're making, uh, while you're there making a donation, <laughs> you can uh, fool, uh, tool around the website or fool around on the website and um, you know, check out some of the other things that we do offer, including paid production services. Yeah. Um, and you know, it's funny because um, we're a scrappy community nonprofit. You know, we're 40,000 square feet. We sound really big, but you know, we're going kind of month to month um, on a cash kind of break even basis, right? Mm -hmm. And so thinking about your donors out there and the folks who have the capacity to support community collaboration, I think the concept of leverage is really important. And even if, you have capacity that you're able to share right in this reciprocal way mm -hmm. with groups like us there are still overhead costs that you're absorbing and that's where donations can go a long way is to fund that collaboration so you do have paid services but if somebody's like well maybe we'll give dave fifty thousand, you know to do more of these free community-based collaborations mm -hmm. i imagine the dividend is a lot bigger because what you have is you have energy and goodwill that comes from that, that ripples out. If it's just a paid service, yeah, people had a great deliverable, but it kind of stops there. And so I would encourage donors out there to think about how do we support that collaboration? What's the gift that will enable Dave and his amazing crew here, Eric and everybody, mm. to do more collaboration? Because that's what I think builds community. Absolutely, okay. yeah, yeah. Little, I, I, on my soapbox I like your thinking. Okay. I like this guy's thinking. <laughs> um, yeah, we want we want everybody to to be thinking along these lines, yeah. uh, seeing the value in everything that we do. It's real. And yeah. it is real. Collaboration it's, it's, sounds kind of fuzzy and yeah. woo woo, but and it's, it's a it's real. a buzzword also yeah. collaboration. But it's yeah. tangible and it's real. And um, we have we have the the backing of being here for thirty five plus years. Um, and and being embedded in the community that in the, in the way that we are, um, you know, we are, we're we're a valued um, um, service. We're a valued uh, center for the community. The donations will also uh, help go towards our youth media program, our, okay. which I always I always describe as a vibrant youth media program, which it is. Um, I was talking with uh, Heather Mack, who leads our our youth media program here, and um, she is really central to having reshaped it into something really awesome. Um, she's she's created uh, Makerspace Mondays, where it, it's you know uh, youth can come in and just kind of tool around with guidance. You know, it's not just tooling around; it's okay. getting gu uh, guidance and instruction. Um, she's phasing out workspace, wo workspace Wednesdays into Thursdays, and I don't have the details about that. No. I should have gotten it. But that's more directed, so mm -hmm. uh, it'll be like TV production. Yeah. It'll be uh, stop motion animation for like a set of four weeks and then another set of four weeks. And, uh, and then it'll go f uh, so that, yeah, workshop Wednesdays, um, disaster piece theater. 
So talking about um, media, how you process media. Oh, okay. You know, so they, they look to kind of bad movies in a masterpiece. Uh, what, what was that? Not masterpiece. Uh, MST3K kind of way. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know MST3K. What is that? Mystery Science Theater 3000. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was, that was my... Uh, a acronym for right. it. <laughs> you guys in the bottom. Yeah, the robots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, okay. so looking at media kind of um, uh, analytically, critically, yeah. you know, so that we're teaching the 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 media makers of tomorrow yeah. um, how to look at the how to consume the media, so that they're not just consumers, but that they are um, participating in a dialogue, the the dialogue that media allows. Yeah. Um, not to get too um, highbrow about it, but that's that's what it is. I think um, agency is the watchword of our time. I mean, you're talking about shifts in media distribution and support to anchor institutions, right? Like Somerville Media Center. And, um, you know, I mean, just a little bit on the soapbox again, but as companies come to control more of our data and more and more content is algorithmically driven, even AI created content now because they know how our emotions work and they can package that up and deliver it. Right. For media to remain human, we sort of have to be in control of it. And so you're training programs that create first this, the understanding that this is a good, this is a social good. And then the second, the confidence mm -hmm. to then begin to create that, those stories, right? Bring them alive is, is huge. And I'm all over it. So yeah. Congrats. Yeah. So bring it all down to like a human level yeah. and, and just where, where things always need to circle back to um, when you're when you're telling stories yeah. in our case. And then when when you're making art right. uh, in both cases and right. and and uh, artisans, um, you all definitely have a really good uh, facility. I mean, your facility is not really good. It's amazing. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> I like to think of it as a wonderland. Right? Yeah, it's 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 crazy. So if you have a chance to tour artisans, yeah. you definitely should. It's uh, it's it's out of control. Like yeah. Skull has their own uh, little bike shop. Fleet headquarters. Fleet yeah. headquarters of Skull. Uh, the the uh, the souped up bike mm -hmm. uh, coalition that you occasionally see roaming the, yeah, the, the, the Boston lights. streets on, on Saturday nights, yeah. um, as well as uh, a welding area, as well as a wood shop, as well as a uh, uh, computer lab. Right, digital fabrication, right, machining. We have a prop shop for cosplay people, fiber arts. Um, there is um, casting and jewelry as well, and my electronics and robotics. That's that's amazing, and then just to like uh, to highlight our own offerings here, uh, we have uh, if you're interested at all in TV production, we have uh, two studios that you can uh, learn how to use. Um, as I talked about the hot set, and then our main studio. Mm -hmm. If you're interested in podcasting at all, our newest studio that we're really proud of is the uh, the podcast studio in the back of the building. Um, we have our Boston Free Radio Internet Radio Station, if you've ever desired to go, uh, uh, if you've ever been inspired to um, become a radio DJ. Mm. That's how I got started here, actually, yeah. is uh, Boston Free Radio. A friend, a friend of mine and I, um, Elaine, we had a show called Crystal City Radio Comics, where we wrote skits and then uh, played music in between, and then I wrote a comic about those skits at the end of it. So that's brilliant, yeah, huh? Yeah. Well, you guys did this wonderful thing over the summer, which was you had a podcast pop up, basically, right? Yes, that yeah. That was amazing. Uh, I don't know where the idea came from. It was down in Assembly Square. Yep. And um, you guys hosted us for a maker takeover, which was a ton of fun. That was fun. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for reminding me about Vox sure. Pop. Vox like Pop. it was just. It was just a few months ago, but um, yeah, that was amazing. For for those of you in Somerville, you might have seen that um, over at Assembly Square. We we had a a six month pop up space there uh, that Federal Realty Investment Trust uh, you know gave to us, yeah, and brilliant. yeah, it was it was fun. We did have live podcasts. We had Artisans Asylum take over one night. Uh, we had comedy. We had uh, events with the Somerville Public Library. Um, I hosted some uh, drawing events there. It, it was it was a lot of fun. 
Yeah. Uh, we're looking forward to uh, the possibility of doing it again next year if they'll right. have us. And uh, yeah, just our, our valued community partners like yeah. yourself, like Federal you. Realty, um, who, who you know, continue to see the value in, in yeah. community media and what Somerville Media Center um, has brought to not only the media landscape in right. Somerville, but like the, the, the community um, and our, yeah. our participation in it. And hopefully we want, we want to stay around and- um, You can make it happen. <laughs> <laughs> you can make it happen. So please uh, uh, go to our website, somervillemedia.org and uh, make a donation. Yeah, um, any big one. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you can is That's appreciated. If you can make a big, big one, hey, why not? No. Um, sure. Any any parting words, Lars? What do you have? Um, what do you have in the pipeline? So thank you. Biggest parting words. Um, so in the pipeline, this weekend, created by a festival, is happening in Boston um, at the Boston Children's Museum. It's a wonderful opportunity to come and see 14 of our makers who have installations there. Um, and then, of course, there's a much larger um, presentation of um, the learning and sort of STEM, if you will, the science, technology, engineering, and math qualities that can be um, introduced, acquired, and celebrated through making. Um, so that'll be this weekend, um, Friday from 5 to 9 p.m., and then Saturday from 10 a.m. to 5 p.m. Okay. After that, I guess the next big thing's gonna be our winter market, um, which is a great time to come buy some gifts. You know, we have Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Christmas, it's all coming up. The holy trifecta. <laughs> the trifecta of holiday giving. Yeah. Awesome. Um, yeah, so a lot going on. Um, I think it's a wonderful time for you guys to be in media and growing. Mm. Um, there's so much happening in Somerville. These stories can be easily overlooked. And so the fact that you're able to get out there, capture them, and share our moment, um, not just right now live, but create that archive of a community and evolution, I think is brilliant. So Awesome. Rock on. So uh, tune in to our live lunch cast tomorrow where we'll have uh, some members, which camera am I looking at? Oh, this one here. <laughs> where we'll have our uh, members come on, a few of our members, including Yale um, Gavish, who's a local musician, Bob Shane, who's a DJ, as well as uh, you know, just a final push from staff to uh, promote as much as we can Community Media Week events uh, which again include an open house on Saturday and the closing comedy show on Sunday, mm -hmm. for which we're offering two for one tickets at the moment. So all that info at somervillemedia.org where you can also make a donation. I wanna thank Lars Torres, the executive director of Artisans Asylum yeah. for coming on and be my guest this so live, live lunch cast. Yeah, I'm glad, it was fun. I'm glad, I'm glad you came on. Um, and so uh, thanks again, get out there and donate. Hello and welcome back to the Somerville Media Center's live lunch cast. I unfortunately am no longer Dave Ortega, I am Adam Stone, and with me I have one of our fantastic interns, Wyatt. Say hello, Wyatt. Hi. Hi, I'm Wyatt. Hello. So you uh, originally came through uh, from our partnership with Leslie University. Yes. And you are in the filmmaking program there. Mm -hmm. And. We could not obviously do all of what we do without our phenomenal interns like yes. you and Gabby, <laughs> who are currently interning with us today. Yes. Um, so tell us a little bit about, well, first introduce yourself, one, uh, two sentences or less, why don't you introduce yourself and your media making ambitions? Sure. Well, again, I'm Wyatt Beaudry. Um, and when it comes to media making, I'm really interested in uh, actually taking the medium of a piece and making it part of the story. Um, so definitely looking into live shows, comedy, um, mixture of comedy and horror, and, in, and uh, also including a lot of like queer POC themes and things like that, so yeah. <laughs> yeah, and you've been doing a lot of uh, uh, projects on that. I know you were yes. editing our piece with 
the CHA. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Definitely. And so, so, as I said before, we originally met because of our partnership with Leslie. We taught a course there. Mm -hmm. And then afterwards, you loved seeing me so much that you decided to <laughs> continue uh, on and become a full-fledged intern at the Media Center. Yes. So tell me, what drew you, I'm sure at Leslie you have a wide variety of internship opportunities. I'm sure the media program in there is currently growing. Is, uh, yeah. Lu, uh, LUCAD, mm -hmm. LA Plus T TV. And you have a wide variety of media making internship opportunities. What decided you, you know what, Sunnyvale Media Center is so great, I want to keep coming back. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So actually it was part of like being in that live class with you. and. Uh, in general at the school and like being able to make an actual live show with my friends because that was just like made me realize like oh man like I want to be involved in like making things like that this spontaneous pieces are just so fun um, and so I, I knew I had a connection to the media center through that project and kind of realizing like this is part of what I want to do in my filmmaking career um, is Part of what led me here and so it was accessible and I knew that I could have some opportunities that could lead to new things here and I, and I have actually which is great um, but that's kind of why I came here specifically. I want to touch on you, you just said accessibility that's something we, yeah. we really strive for here at the Media Center accessibility. Anyone who lives in Somerville anyone who doesn't live in Somerville can come in meet with our phenomenal coordinator Erica Jones take orientation and can get in here and start taking classes and start making media. And we really strive to make it as easy as possible. Get in, become a member, take orientation, take your class, you're good to go. Oh yeah. Yeah, and like, <laughs> and the, we, we really do wanna continue doing that, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna hijack for a moment and do some shameless plugging. Uh -huh. um, you know, we really do need to, we really want your support to continue making um, media here so that we can continue our mission of, of providing access and education. And we are doing that a number of different ways. You can go to summerofmedia.org, click on donate. If you donate $50, you'll get a t-shirt. If you donate $75, you'll get a tote bag, both made in Somerville branded. And right now, if you donate 100, we'll give Wyatt a free t-shirt. Because, of course, we need more t-shirts, need more swag. It's true, I gotta represent. Indeed. And then this weekend, we have our comedy benefit and right now we're offering two for one tickets. Um, so if you buy one, get one free. It's gonna be an amazing night. Um, in addition, we're having an open house on, uh, on Saturday and with a live podcasting. So if you are watching this on Facebook or watching it on TV, wherever you happen to be watching it, if you're like, hmm, th this sounds really interesting, uh, I wanna check it out, it'd be a great time to come down, meet us, see the center, take a tour. And even if you can't make it on Saturday and you wanna come down and take a look, we're we're always here Monday through Friday, you know, noon to 10 p.m. Come on down, and we can. Uh, we'll introduce introduce yourself. We'll introduce ourselves, and we'll be more than happy to show you around and show you all the great facilities you can use. Dave was talking earlier uh, about you know our main studio, the huts that we're in, the podcast studio, Boston Free Radio. Um, so I'm done hijacking uh, <laughs> okay. for shameless plugging. Yeah, yeah, got it. Yeah. But. I just want to kind of talk about like how accessible the media center is for you. How yeah. how are you able to just kind of jump in here and start not only making the projects we unfortunately tell you that we want you to make as an intern, but yeah. also your ability to make your own media, access to our equipment, etc. Yeah. Um, so I I don't know if I've really started like making my own projects here yet, um, but from the class I I know the space, um, and so it was helpful to come here and like. If you ask me, like, hey, can you just like film this? You know, I, I know how to use the cameras. I'm familiar with the studio, or um, I've worked with the the people at DIY, which is a live show here. Um, and so I was able to help them in the studio without, you know, I could just jump in and help them pretty immediately. Um, but even just being here and interning and knowing I have access to these materials is really helpful. So if I were like thinking about making something, I know, hey, like. I could come down here, reserve part, like a studio or equipment, and I, I know that I could just make it. And it's great to think like, I also have access to equipment at the college I go to, but other people who don't go to film school, who want to make something can come down here and have that same opportunity to say, I really want to make something and I can do that. <laughs> and I think is that, that's really nice. Yeah, and 
we, we really, again, want to make sure that people um, have the access. We try to make it as minimal as possible. If you come in, you take orientation, if you're, if you're looking at our website, summervillemedia.org slash join, and you're like, you want to take orientation, but, oh, these times don't work out for me, that's fine. We'll make it work for you. We'll make a special time for you to take orientation. If you want to take main studio classes, if you want to take out cameras, like Wyatt was saying before, and you're like, oh, well, the only time for me is this day and this time, you know, I will make it happen for you so that you can get your training and you have the access so that you can make your, your own media. We want to reduce the barriers for media making down to the minimum of possible. So I guess turning back to, you know, the point of access, accessibility, and you're coming in here to kind of creation, what have yeah. been some of the highlights for you in terms of your creative endeavors? Just to kind of, if we we're going to turn this into shameless plugging for uh, some real media center into plugging for our internship program, <laughs> if you were going to, yeah. I'm gonna put on my teacher hat, look into that camera and talk to future interns, what are some of the joys, the best things of working as an intern here at the media center? All right, well, speaking to potential future interns here, um, I would honestly say is, is that it's close to a lot of the colleges that, that are here. Um, so it's not too far. Um, you, you get your hours in really well. And the thing is, I think the biggest thing is the people here are really nice. So when you do work here, no matter what skill like level you're at when you come here, um, there are a lot of people who will answer your questions and who will help you learn, which is like I think the biggest part of an internship um, that you should be looking for is a place where you can learn. And this is a very good environment for that, because even if you are proficient, you can at least get more experience with things. Because um, it's not all just editing, you do get the opportunity to make like projects about the community, um, so you will go like out and film things. So I don't know, it's just like a fun environment and it's very open and you feel very appreciated for being here and I think that for me has been like the biggest thing. And we do appreciate all of you even yeah. if I just made you come back from rock coiling cables. That, hey, that's one of the things we also bring, bring to SMC is co cable coiling power. <laughs> we do have that. Over under. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to slowly kind of start wrapping this down a little bit. Sure. Um, again, summervillemedia.org uh, slash donate. Um, we really do want to keep providing this access. Um, we want to keep providing internship opportunities um, through all the colleges. No matter if if you are a college student watching this, and you want, if you're like, "Oh, is my college any way affiliated with Somerville Media Center?" You can just shoot us an email. Go to SomervilleMedia.org. Uh, you can shoot us an email or go talk to your advisor. Say, "Hey, I saw this cool thing on TV about Somerville Media Center. Do you know anything about it?" We've worked with interns from. You know, Leslie, Emerson, Northeastern, all over them. So it re there really is very little barriers to getting into an internship here. Um, so we're just going to start winding this uh, part of our live lunch cast down um, so that we can go get lunch. And again, SomervilleMedia.org, we really appreciate any donations you can give. Again, $50 for a t-shirt, $75 for a tote bag, the Comedy Benefit Show is going to be on Sunday with our open house on Saturday. And you can tune in tomorrow, same Somerville channel, for another live lunch cast where we'll be having some more uh, special guests. I'm not going to spoil who they are because you have to tune in to find out. You see why never leave, never tell the audience everything. I'm going to put my educator hat back on. Gotcha, okay. So I'm going to... <laughs> Uh, let the um, wrap up commence. Thank you so much again for joining it, uh, joining in, tuning in to our live lunch cast on this Thursday day, and we hopefully will see you around the media center sometime soon. Wyatt, Please. thank you so much for um, for joining me on the lunch cast. You're so welcome. Thank you for inviting me. <laughs> uh, uh, voluntold, as my favorite <laughs> thing is. Yeah, it's all right. That's what I'm here for. All righty. Thank you all for watching, and we'll see you around the media center.